Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of Fusion of Honor, where we talk about MLW Fusion and Ring of Honor. Now, guys, if you've been with us for the past couple weeks, you will know that MLW has been doing this draft, and we've kind of been kind of light on the MLW news, but all of that changes today because we are going to be previewing MLW's pay-per-view that's going to be happening this Saturday, the Battle Riot 3. And when I say we, I mean myself and my co-host here with me today is the three-time, three-time, three-time baby-making champ, Ness, who will actually be at Battle Riot in attendance. He thought about getting a refund after he found found out Selena De Lorenzo wouldn't be there. But luckily for all of us and for you, he decided to, to forge on no matter what. So he will be there to be able to give us a live perspective of what it's like inside the 2300 arena when that place is rocking. So Ness, how are you doing today? Yeah, man, I'm feeling great. I'm just ready to be at the show tomorrow. Yes, I am highly upset that um, Serena, uh, Selena De Laurenta was killed off. And I thought it was just going to be for, you know, entertainment purposes, you know, suspense. But yeah, she's, she's, she's dead. She's dead in the world of MLW uh, uh, anyway. But, uh, yeah, I'm just ready to be back in front of, uh, for a show around with a live crowd. I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm just ready to gear and I'm ready to go. Yeah, so, guys, before we get into our reviews and previews for this week, remember to hit that like button, comment, share, subscribe if you haven't already. It allows us to do all the things that we do for you. So let's talk about Battle Riot. Now, we have a pretty light show because of how important the Battle Riot match actually is. So let's talk about these preliminary matches. First, we have the Von Erichs, Marshall and Ross, taking on Team Filthy, kept Tom Lawler and Kevin Koo in a bunkhouse brawl. This has been a, uh, a feud that has been going on for a very, very long, long time between the Von Erichs and Team Filthy. They have been trying to get their hands on Tom Lawler. Lawler has managed to weasel his way out of it multiple times, but he won't be able to do so in a bunkhouse brawl. But he will be able to have an advantage in a bunkhouse brawl because it's not really, there are not many rules. <laughs> so it definitely is in the, the favor of Team Filthy. So who do you got for this one? I'm taking, I'm taking the Von Erichs on this one. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the Von Erics. They gotta get, they gotta get their 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 revenge for the the filthiness of Tom <laughs> Lawler. Yeah, I think that this is. I don't know what match will start the show, but I think this will be a nice feel good moment for the crowd, oh, which yeah. you you will you will be there. So, uh, yeah. So then also we have Richard Holiday will be taking on Mil Muertes, who has been renamed King Muertes for the IWA Caribbean Heavyweight Championship match. And from what I understand, this is going to be under Caribbean rules, which means it will be no disqualification. So we have the uh, the dynastic pretty boy up against the murderous, the murderous mayhem. Of death. Yeah. <laughs> of death. I mean, if you think, think about it, like they changed his name from uh, Thousand Deaths. To King Death. King Death. So, <laughs> I mean, it doesn't get any better for Richard Holiday. You know? it's, it's, I don't know how this good. one. Uh, yeah, I don't know how this is gonna work out for him. But I, I'm actually gonna take. I'm gonna take Richard Holiday on this one. I'm gonna. I think they pull a little bit of a swerve, uh, unless they want to give a title to Muertes because of what's gonna happen with Azteca Underground. But I kind of feel like Holiday pulls away with this one. What about you? Yeah, I'm actually gonna go with. Um, King Mortes solely because of what you just said, how they're now they're trying to they're going to try to establish Azteca Underground, and I think having the Caribbean Championship would be like a for starters, um, and it's just you know that's somewhere to start. That's just base level, you know. You know they want to shoot for the top, but they can't shoot for the top just yet. Yeah, that's true. That and I, I kind of want to take Mortes, but like a part of me is just like Holiday has found a way to win. Multiple right. times, so I'm just kind of looking forward to see whether or not the no DQ works in his favor, especially because this is an interesting match because both of them are kind of heels. Yeah. So, so how exactly they're going to play off each other? That's something to look forward to. But one thing we can look forward to is the return to pay per view 
of one other than Davey Richards. Davey Richards, who is signed with MLW, he will be making his MLW, I think, debut. Yeah. And uh, he has a match against TJP. I think this is probably the most obvious out of all of them to, <laughs> to, to predict. I think we're going to be unanimous on this one. I think we're both taking David Richards, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> how do you like? How do you make a return? I mean, it's happened, but you know, that's understandable in those companies, that company, to say the least. But yeah, you, there's no way that David Richards is going to make his uh, well debut and return to wrestling and job. So yeah. So that leaves us with the Battle Riot match itself. And uh, I, I, I'm interested to see how exactly they pull this off because there are some guys who are going to be doing some double duty. Let's run down who is in this match very quickly. So we have Richard Holiday and King Moritz. We have Zenshi. We have Lee Moriarty, TJP, Gringo Loco, Arez, Kevin Koo, Mads Kruger, Myron Reed, Gino Medina, Calvin Tankman. Savio Vega, EJ and Duca, Aramis, Marshall the Devon Eriks, King Mo, Buku Dao, Alex Kane, Davy Richards, Davari, Kit Osborne, Joseph Samael making his return after injury, the member of Contra mm. Unit, Simon Gotch, Akuro Kwan, Tom Lawler, and last but not least, Alexander Hammerstone. So the the win the the, the winner of the Battle Riot match gets a shot, a future shot at the MLW World Heavyweight Championship. So this is a uh, this is an interesting kind of kind of a, a, a situation, and uh, if this is a nice little twist on a regular kind of uh, Royal Rumble style match. So I don't know, like I kind of want to I kind of want to go with Hammerstone. I yeah. kind of feel like Hammerstone is the guy who is going to win this, and then he finally can dethrone. Uh, uh, Jacob Fatu because Fatu refused to give him the match and uh, put the uh, the heavyweight title up against the national title. But now Hammerstone can find a way around all of that just by winning this battle riot match. So I'm gonna go with Hammerstone. What about you? I'm gonna agree. I got I gotta go with Hammerstone. Like this 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 story is just is too good to not be Hammerstone. You know having. Him having a title for like pretty much the last two years, Jacob Fatu two reigning over MLW for the last two years. These guys are coming to a head. Jacob Fatu two saying, "No, you don't. You don't get to make the matches, and I'll face you when I feel like it, and I don't feel like it. So it's not going down." Now you can't deny it if he wins. If Alexander Hammerstone wins the battle riot, you know, like there's no more running. They're, like they just got a clash. Yeah. I think this is going to be uh, – ho- hopefully Hammerstone does win because Hammerstone yeah. versus Fatu will be a great way to get the ball rolling on the Vice TV era yeah. of MLW. So, guys, we got two pay-per-views to talk about. We don't just have this MLW show that Ness is going to be in attendance. We also have Ring of Honor, best in the world. We have July 10th. Battle Riot, July 11th, the best in the world. But before we can even talk about best in the world, we got to talk about these week's episodes of Ring of Honor television. So let's get to it. I got to say, this was actually a very good episode of TV. Yeah. I like this one a lot. This one had a little bit of everything. <laughs> Literally everything. This started off with... Jonathan Gresham putting the title on the line, the pure championship, defending against Fred Yehi, the savage weight, with Mike Canellis on commentary. Mike Bennett, sorry, on commentary. Uh, yeah, I'm pulling up. You were right I'm the first up, time. I'm pulling up WWE. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mike, Mike Bennett, Mike Bennett uh, on commentary as he won the uh, Gauntlet for Gold uh, match, and he will be challenging the winner of this match at Best in the World for the pure title. And Gresham and Yehi put on a clinic. I don't know if this is the best pure rules match we've seen since Ness and I started covering Ring of Honor, but it's got to be up there. 
this one was a chess match. That's really the only that was I'm watching this. I'm trying to think like how am I gonna put this into words? And chess match is just what I was thinking of because this match had it all. This had this match had the classic moments where two guys are doing the, the the similar moves and they have the moment where they look at each other like oh, okay all right yeah they have the moments where there's incredible chain wrestling going on you can feel the emotion of both men john they have they found a way to and this is something that i really enjoy is that they're finding ways to put new twists on pure rules matches considering how a normal person might look at a pure rules match and say there's so many restrictions these guys are saying, how do we find new ways to present this? And they were making rope breaks without using rope breaks. Because in a pure rules match, as we know, each guy only has three rope breaks. They were finding ways to basically have both of them on the ropes. And Todd Sinclair, who obviously we know has problems deciding what he's going to do in life and in matches, is just like, well, I mean... I don't want to take both of them to have rope breaks. And so they're able to kind of manipulate the ropes still and use it to their advantage and basically say, I can one up you. Can you one up me? And even when, when the match spilled to the outside, there was that moment where they're standing there and they're, they, Sinclair's doing the, the 10 count. And uh, they're like, okay, we're going to, we're going to have to, uh, we're going to have to get in slowly, but surely. And uh, you don't hit me, I don't hit you. Like, we're going to have that moment. But this was a really, really good match. Jonathan Gresham pulls out the win kind of out of uh, out of nowhere. Yeah. The, there was no real kind of finish. There was no real hit of a finisher or anything like that. It was just kind of a roll-up, kind of, sort of. It, you just perch, uh, stacked him up on his shoulders. But I really like this one, and this is one I would definitely watch back. Ness, what about you? What yeah, you think? I gotta, I gotta agree. This was a great opener, a great pure rules match to begin with, and I just gotta give Jonathan Gresham his props because that opening promo video, he spoke with such conviction about how he feels about the the the, the pure division itself, pure wrestling as a whole, and then just how he feels about being at the top of the division, being the champion. You know, it's like it kind of comes off kind of heelish, but it's not really heelish, like cocky that I have this ability. I have this talent. I'm the best. And the, therefore the fact that I am the best, I'm the champion. I can talk. I can talk my shit for the most part. And he goes out there, he backs it up. And he's just like, look, even the post match, he's like, look, Fred Yehi, you're great, but you need to go back and train. Maybe you can, maybe one day you can take this title off of me. And it's just like, God damn, this motherfucker is cocky as hell. <laughs> but he backs it up. Right? So it's like you, as upset that it might make someone that isn't a fan, it just reassures that he goes out there, he's waving the flag of pure wrestling, and he just does it to a T to a that, like, he really is the pure division, you know. He he he's brought it back. He's ten and zero, ten and zero at this point, and it, he's getting. He has the respect of Fred Yehi already. They came up together. They they trained together um, before, you know. They got to where they're at now, but it kind of just like man, he's. I I don't want to say he's on another level, but he really is, and it's just like. At this point, there I don't see anybody stopping him. I definitely don't see Mike Bennett. <laughs> I definitely don't see Mike Bennett uh, defeating him at best in the world. But even with that, that's something I want to get into, too. He has the respect of Fred Yehi. He respects Fred Yehi because he knows Fred Yehi's uh, upbringing in, in professional wrestling. He knows Freddie A. High's stance on professional wrestling and pure wrestling. He know he's a, a a wrestler's wrestler. He doesn't have that same respect for Mike Bennett. He said that he doesn't he doesn't see him as someone that belongs in a pure division. He doesn't even think he should have a shot at the title to begin with. One, two, he doesn't respect him. He doesn't care that Mike Bennett respects him. He don't respect Mike Bennett. So now Mike Bennett has to work extra hard, go out there, earn the respect. And I don't see it being um, anything hard to do because Dak Draper, he, Dak Draper, of all people, 
got the respect out of Jonathan Gresham. And honestly, before that match, that's how I felt about Dak Draper being in the pure division. I didn't think that he belonged being there. And he, I, he definitely didn't deserve getting a shot at the pure championship. But, you know, he went out there and, and proved me wrong. He didn't win, but I gained a new respect for him being uh, to, to show what he can do in that division. Um, Mike Bennett, I like him as a wrestler. Do I like him as a, a, a pure wrestler? Do I see him in the pure division? Not at the moment, but I'm willing to let him go out there and wow me just the same way that I'm, I would like for him to wow Jonathan Gresham of all people, because again, that's the pinnacle. That's the top of this division. Pretty much might even be the top of ring of honor. You know, that, that pure division title, that has a lot of prestige behind it. And one can say that it rivals the ROH world title in prestige because of the people that have held it. Not even just the people that have held it, but the way that you have to go about being in the division and having that title. You know, with the world title, you can do all types of things to win it. You know, like you can cut corners. You can do... You can cheat, as we've seen. You can seen. choke people. You can choke people out <laughs> with wires, you know. You can knock the ref out and do whatever. You can't do that in the pure division. You really have to bring wrestling. Like, you really have to bring that style. And no chicanery, no shenanigans, nothing of that sort can go in the pure division. So I'm hoping that uh, uh, Mike Bennett can earn the respect of uh, Jonathan Gresham. Because at the end of the day, that he doesn't really necessarily need to win. His, in, in my opinion, his main focus should be trying to earn that respect so that he can be in the division and have the, the person that's pretty much overseeing that division show him the respect that he deserves or he feels that he deserves. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. I'm with you on that one. I think that uh, well, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that when yeah. we get to the, to the predictions. But if we're talking about earning respect, <laughs> and we're talking about what it means, what you have to go through to get that respect. We got to talk about our main event. It's Jay Briscoe, Mark Briscoe. It's the fight at the farm. It's Ring of Honor's break in case of emergency <laughs> match. Honestly. And uh, it did not disappoint. No, it did not. <laughs> at <laughs> all. <God. laughs> There's a reason why it's a break in case of emergency match. Because these are two guys who love each other dearly. And the only thing they love more than each other is hitting each other. And this was a hilariously great match. This match had some awesome fun spots there. There's a, I think probably my favorite moment is, my favorite moment is when, when Jay is lying on the table. And Mark, Mark starts climbing it. a tree in order to get on top of like a awning kind of a patio kind of thing so he can jump off of it now why was this so great was one it's much higher than a regular ladder two there's nothing underneath the table to catch At their all. weights and three the fact that there's nothing under the table is made even funnier by the fact that earlier in the match when jay threw mark off of the parked truck or yeah. parked trailer, he clearly fell onto gimmicked shit. Yeah. So they were like, we should put gimmicked shit here, but not over here. <laughs> right. And uh, I think that was definitely my favorite spot of the night. But this was a hilariously awesome match. And it w it worked really well, I gotta say. Um, I, I, definitely, I definitely imagined uh, that Ness was Papa Briscoe. And that that's kind of like what his life is like sometimes with his kids, where he's just like, are you done? Yeah. Are you done? <laughs> Do you have it out of your system? Nobody's going through a table, though. Let me just say that. <laughs> Don't need child protective services called on me. Yeah, we're not, we're not, try, we're not, trying, to, uh, we're not trying to cast any aspersions toward, towards us as parenting. It's... <laughs> But Child Protective Services probably should have been called at the Briscoe house yes. many years ago. Yes. Mark would still have his front teeth. That is a probably for sure. But uh, this was this was a hilarious match. Ness, what did you think about this one? 
this was definitely main event worthy. Just just the start from the the video package that you know marks. And I'll do it again. I'm do it again. I'll do it again. I'll do it again. And then Jay's just like, I'll kick your ass. Just like I've been doing all these years, chicken. I'm kick your ass. We kick your ass. And then what made it even better is they're showing the home movies of these guys grow like. I don't know what age they were, like probably early teens or like, like or younger than that. These guys literally wrestling in their backyard, like legit backyard wrestling. Like they're bleeding, putting each other through tables, you know, just a whole lot of carnage. Just like Stat King said, Child Protective Service probably should have been called to the Briscoe house. But luckily they weren't because they took that, you know, years of that grooming. And look where they're at now. But the match itself, extremely entertaining. The commentary between the two, hilarious. Because, you know, they're brothers. Of course, they love each other. But they're at odds ends at this moment in time. And, you know, they're not seeing eye to eye. They're both frustrated with each other for whatever reason it may be. Um, and they're taking it out on each other. They, they were laying into each other. Right? They held no punches, honestly. They, they didn't hold back in this match whatsoever. Um, there was Jay tried to take Mark's head off with a with a with a with a shovel at one point. Um, definitely hit him in the head with I think it was a trash can lid, like literally over the top. It wasn't like no, I'm not gonna hit you in your back. You know, you're gonna get this headshot. Uh, throw, putting each other through tables, throwing each other off of RVs. Like it was just a real fight, like literally a fight, not a wrestling match. This was a fight. Um, I thought Papa Risco was going to be the, the referee after a Thanks. while. Uh, you know, he tried within the first, like, two minutes after a while, after that. It was just like, oh, you guys can do whatever the fuck you need to do. Get it out of your system, and then I'll come back around once you're finished. Oh, that was, uh, uh, that was one of the other funny parts is when, uh, when, when Jay has Mark in the back of the truck. And yeah. he's, telling, he's telling the cameraman to get in, but he just, like, leaves his dad behind. He's yeah. just like. He's like, no, no, he can, he can walk. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, uh, no, nah, dad, just you stay over here. Let me, let me handle this. I'm, I got to take care of your son real quick. But um, and even another point that I really want to, I want to point out that I thought at first it, it bothered me, but now I'm actually kind of glad it didn't happen. There was no definitive winner in this match. Um, I love that because I, I, I think it's better that neither one of them took the loss. Uh. That definitely would have made for the situation to be worse in this situation because they're already we already had Mark get the last victory on the 500th episode of Ring of Honor, um, and again things were already still not you know taken care of since then. The fight, the fact that they just fought it out, fought to both, uh, they were exhausted, and then Papa Briscoe comes out and is like, you "Good, you good." You boys good now? And then they're like, all right, now we're fine. Like, now we're good. Now we're back on the same. And that's what happens between brothers. I've done it many years, me and my younger brother. Again, if I'm going to compare the families, I'm the Jay Briscoe. He's Mark Briscoe. We <laughs> fought for, and then I'm a year older than him. We fought literally all the time. Like, for whatever the situation it is, as small as it was, we fought. Whatever the outcome it was, we just had to get it out of our systems at the end of the day. And then we could have moved, we moved forward from the situation. So the fact that there was no definitive winner, again, I think whoever would have took the loss, that could have kept the story going as there being a problem between the two, other than, you know, brothers fighting, brothers getting it out, getting past whatever situation it may be. Now we're going forward, but the 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 line of the night, Papa Briscoe. All right, you guys good? All right, now clean this shit up. Now <laughs> that just brings it back all full circle of this is a family. The dad will let you guys get it out. Now you did whatever you know you 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 wrecked the farm, you did all this stuff. All right, you guys good now? Cool. Now clean this shit up. Clean up my goddamn farm. And now you guys get back on the same page and go kick, go out there and kick somebody's ass. 
Yeah, this was a, a, a good ending. <laughs> yeah. Papa Briscoe looked the best, one yeah. might say. I did I did think when they got back into the ring and Mark started turning up, I thought he was I thought he was going to win again. Yeah. I was like, "Oh shit, they're going to give Mark a, a, a re- like a real real win." I was like, oh, "This is going to be great." But uh no, I agree with you that that this is a, a solid way of keeping them both on the same page and getting them reunited so that they can go after tag team gold, which is really the the, the goal of any tag team. And they they are they do have a match at best in the world, but we are going to get to that. But first, we need to talk about Women of Honor Wednesday. This is a uh, this is a momentous a momentous moment <laughs> <laughs> when Women of Honor Wednesday starts off how the first Women of Honor Wednesday should have started with Sumi Sakai. Finally getting Finally. Her gold. I don't and, know who's been watching because I know they had to be watching. Because we've been on this campaign of getting Sumi Sakai at Golden Ticket. They had to watch the last episode yeah. when Stat King <laughs> got the golden ticket before her. It's all right. Now we gotta give her we gotta give her a ticket now. We gotta give her a ticket. Yeah, that was <laughs> I just I think what 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 made me laugh the most is when Sumi Sakai is trying to like she's fumbling with her phone like oh it's yeah. sideways oh shit it's sideways. and Maria is just completely no selling the fact that they have not given her a ticket to gold yet which I'm I'll I'll, I'll shoot her some bail I'll say maybe you know they they taped them all in a row like over the course of like a day or something like that so she didn't know when they were going to be you know who was going to get picked when but I mean, then again, she is on the board of directors, so you would assume that she would have some kind of power over this. But either way, Sumi Sakai finally in the Ticket to Gold uh, tournament, and we find out that we are going to be getting our championship brackets for the tournament at Best in the World. Uh, this is uh, big news. We are going to be fi- finally figuring out who exactly is going to be involved in all of the matches and who how these matches are going to stack up but we also find out during a special uh announcement a special women of honor wednesday on thursday that marty bell and holodot are also getting tickets to gold and will also be part of the tournament so ness what do you think about these two really big additions to Women of Honor Wednesday and to the tournament. No no uh, confirmation whether or not they have been officially, either of them have been officially signed by Ring of Honor, whether this is just you know for the duration of the tournament or not. But what do you think about their addition to the tournament and whether it adds any uh, kind of, uh, or, or more credibility to the tournament itself? Oh, for sure, definitely. Uh, this is a major, major addition to veterans, to uh, big names on the Indies. Uh, not even just in any, uh, just in professional wrestling for women as a whole in general. So this definitely adds uh, a lot of credibility to now. Like there, we have the vets in in the in in the tournament, and we have some not so known faces now. So I think the mixture of both is going to be great. Um, there's going to be some some vets, some veterans, some big names that's going to be putting over some new faces. Uh, and I think it's, it's great. Marty, De- uh, Marty, Marty Bell, if someone has, um, was in impact at one point, you know, she definitely, um, I think she's a, she, was she in NWA too yes. as well? Yes. Mm-hmm. She's again, more, more notable, more notable faces being in this tournament. So I love the fact that Ring of Honor is going out of their way to try to put, you know, make this as, uh, as as major and as important as it as it needs to be, honestly, um, we again, you guys have heard my disdain about how the women's division was handled, what happened with Kelly Klein, but I think that now we're on the up and up. Things are are looking very good now, as far as you know the bracket, the the, the well, we'll see the brackets, but just the talent that's a part of the the tournament in itself. I think they're doing very well, and I have to commend, uh, I guess. Maria Canellas and the rest of the board for uh, their efforts. So let's talk about 
the uh, the match that happened this week because it does actually impact, unfortunately, yeah. our tournament. So let's talk about this. We have Ali Rex and Gia Scott teaming up to take on Willow and Sumi Sakai, Willow Nightingale. So this was this is a pretty good tag match. Yeah. Had some nice some nice moments in this one. Uh, good back and forth. I was surprised by the winners. I did not think that Ali Rex and Gia Scott were going to pick up the win on this one. I thought it was going to be Sumi Sakai as the uh, you know the veteran kind of leading with uh, with Willow uh, there to 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 help her out. But this was a, a nice little twist to have Gia and Ali Rex win. Unfortunately, during the match, Gia Rex in got an injury and she is going to require surgery and she will no longer be able to be part of the tournament, which kind of sucked because right after the match, they had the uh, the the Zoom call yeah. with Ali and and Maria, where Maria gives her the 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 ticket to gold, and uh, you got to see a lot of Ali Rex's personality. She had all those uh, superhero toys and things like that, action figures behind her. Uh, so we wish her the best in all yeah. of her recovery. Um, but you know, the show kind of has to go on. And so we do have an open spot and how exactly they're going to fill that we will get to, but Ness, what did you think about this women's tag match? Yeah, I was actually surprised that Gia, Gia Scott and, uh, Allie Rex won this match as well. Cause I had the, you know, a huge fan of Will Nightingale and I felt like her and Sumi Sakai teaming together was kind of perfect. You know, they both got those, uh, bubbly personalities, but they can get serious in the ring when need be. But, you know, uh, as we've seen, you know, and too much of a good thing could be a bad thing. So uh, props to G Scott and Ali Rex picking up the victory. But it's just, it just sucks, man, because, you know, she gets the opportunity, another opportunity to uh, just keep showing what she, what she can do. You know, finally gets a shot to be in the the uh, the Women of Honor title uh, tournament. You know, just to come down with an injury. So, uh, you know, best of best of wishes to Ali Rex. You know, we were wishing you a speedy recovery, and hopefully, you know, down the line you get another opportunity because like this was this was going to be major. I'm sure, I'm pretty sure this is what is going to be like a, a a huge step for her in her career, definitely for sure. You know, and, and you know, it's unfortunate that things happen, but hopefully, like she does get another shot sometime. Yeah, you never know. That could be a, a good uh, built-in storyline for down yeah. the road. She can, when she makes her return, she can try to challenge for the title and uh, say, you know, if I had been in the tournament, I would have won. And right. uh, you know, that that that's all it really takes sometimes. Uh, you know, let's not um, the 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 one that I'm thinking of immediately that comes to mind for me is uh, when Rollins returned to uh, go after Roman and he was just yeah. like I never lost that title and uh, I would still have it so I'm yeah. I, I want it and Ali can say I should have been in the tournament I got injured no fault of my own now I, I deserve the title shot so let's talk about who we have in this tournament we have Roxy we have Angelina Love getting a first round bye. We have Miranda Alizé, Trisha Dora, Allison Kay, Maserati, Willow Nightingale, Nicole Savoy, Mandy Leon, Max the Impaler, which means Amy Rose is not far behind, Alex Gracia, <laughs> Sumi Sakai, Holodad, and Marty Bell. That leaves one spot remaining with Ali Rex being forced to pull out. And Ring of Honor, you know, I got to say, sometimes... When you're when you're handed a difficult situation booking wise, it's tough to figure out what to do, especially when you have a limited roster and a limited number of people to call. Maybe they tried to call Laney Luck and she was already booked or she had other things that she needed to do or whatever the case may be. Maybe they tried to call some of the other women that they brought on, but maybe they didn't even think of that. Maybe they thought we're going to go with something that makes absolute perfect sense. We are going to have a match where Quinn McKay can earn her way into the tournament by beating none other than the woman who cost her the match the first time she had the opportunity to get into the tournament, Mandy Leon of the Allure. Now, it should be noted, 
Maria did not say that Angelina Love will be banned from ringside. She didn't say anything about that. So Quinn may have to deal with Angelina Love being there. So we'll we'll have to see how this works out. But I think even if Angelina Love is there, it's really strong if Quinn can pull this out. I think yes. Angelina Love should be there, actually. I think they should make sure that Angela that they don't do anything where it's like she's banned from ringside or anything like that, because you can prove that Quinn is growing. You can show that she is developing and maturing as a performer to not get caught up in the moment and figure out that she has to stay focused to get the win. I'm te- definitely taking Quinn McKay to win the match. What do you think? Yeah, I got to agree with that because that's what was the detriment for her the last time in, uh, in her match against uh, Angelina Love. She pretty much had her beat, but she let Mandy Leon get into her head. And it that was the deciding factor that led to her ultimately losing the match. So now at this point, you you know, you dust yourself off, you try again, you learn from your mistakes. Now you go out there, you have an even bigger beef because this is the person that ultimately hindered you from going on to winning the match. You take your frustration out on her while her partner and then Angelina Love is at ringside. You don't make the same mistake twice. I wouldn't be surprised if she taps out Mandy while staring down Angelina Love, <laughs> letting her know that, look, I don't care what bracket you're in. If we're in the same bracket, I'm coming for you. If I have to meet you again in this in, in this tournament or wherever we, we are in a ring together, if you're standing across from me, I'm going to demolish you. And that is the ultimate story again. Everybody's clamoring, for the most part, for Quinn to be that last person in, in the, the, the last spot of the uh, Women of Honor t- uh, title tournament. It just makes perfect sense. The story literally is right there. It's right here. We talk about the spinning plates. That plate is spinning at 100 miles an hour. Everybody's pretty much as, as love. It's great. All the talent that's in it in this title tournament. But I'm like pretty sure that the one person that has the most fanfare behind them would be Quinn McKay. Just before, like, everybody's connected to her for her being a backstage correspondent. So we see her all the time. You know, we're emotionally invested in her. Her story is, you know, you're definitely emotionally invested in that. You know, the baby face trying to overcome the dashly heels. Who doesn't love that? And then go on, potentially go on and be the face of the division be the, the the title can the title contender and title holder that just all just makes you know it just makes perfect sense you know I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket you know and, and because like we I, I do that so much but it literally just the story is right there it's you just you just got just gotta play it out you know we it's gotta right we there. gotta you gotta wait till we at least get the bracket guys right, right, yeah 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 because yeah, and even if, even when we get the bracket and I'll say it now because they still haven't announced when it's going to happen. We'll just get the bracket and be like, oh, yeah, here, here's the brackets. And then it's just like, all right, you guys going to tell us when the hell it, it's going to happen. <laughs> but, you know, I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll wait till best in the world. But that means we got a preview best in the world. So let's get right to that. We've got, wow, there are total 11 matches on the card. And so this is some, this is some pretty, uh, yeah. pretty, pretty big stuff to get through. Let's, but let's let's move through these. So we've got our two pre-show matches. We've got Dan Housen and PCO versus the Bouncers. I'm taking the Bouncers on this one. They're yeah. they got that they got that heel that, that heel strength going for them. The heel turn that happened, and uh, I think Dan Housen and PCO still getting on the same page when it comes to being a tag team. And we can always count on PCO to malfunction. I was just damn, <laughs> shit. Damn, that's actually a good argument. Uh you know, I'm still gonna, I'm still gonna go with Dan <laughs> Housen and PCO. Just, I don't know. I, uh, damn. Yeah, I'm, you know what? No, I'm gonna go with the bouncers. I'm gonna go with the bouncers because they're, they're looking for. They need a win. One, two. They're gonna find a way to win regardless of how they get it done. Uh, so yeah, I, I'll go with the bouncers on that too. All righty. We got uh, in our next one, we got Demonic Flamita versus Ray Horace. Uh, I, again, this is another situation where somebody recently turned heel. 
they need the win. I'm going with Flamita over Ray Horace. My my apologies to the uh, the weakest member. <laughs> the squad. Oh man, I gotta agree. I gotta agree. This the the demonic Flamita. He needs this win as well because he's coming off the you know the loss of survival of the fittest. He needs to bounce back and. Sorry, Ray Horace, you're going to get sacrificed. That's that, that how that's how it goes sometimes. And here we let's talk about on our main card, not necessarily speaking of sacrifices, but somebody who may be on the uh, 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 up against some tough competition now is Brian Johnson and PJ Black up against the basically reformed Briscoes. And uh, I, don't, I don't think the Briscoes are losing to a team that was basically just put together and is dominated by one person's ego, even if that ego is absolutely deserved because he is the greatest thing on God's green earth coming out of the greatest city in the world, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The Mecca, Brian Johnson. No, I think that Brian Johnson and PJ Black are unable to get the job done. And uh, I would not be surprised if this turns into kind of a, a short program between uh, Brian Johnson and PJ Black, where they where where Johnson is uh, blaming PJ Black for the loss, and PJ Black's just like, but it wasn't my fault. It was your fault. And they uh, that's an easy way to have have a feud and just give get have something for Brian Johnson to do and for PJ Black to do. So I'm going with the Briscoes. Yeah, I'm going with the Briscoes exactly for that same reason because it's Mecca versus everybody, not Mecca and Black versus everybody. So it's going to come down to. Who is this PJ Black guy? Like, yeah, what, it's just like it's, 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 What did he do to deserve to be in the same it, tag? Exactly, team? and I I I'm baffled how this team even became a thing um it's so out of the the ordinary for you know brian johnson because he's just so focused on himself so i guess he said yeah let me try something different you know what it was you know what it was brian johnson probably thought that he was going to be teaming with malachi black and he didn't realize that it was pj black Black. yeah he was like wait a minute what's what's uh, the briscoes wait a minute (laughs) Yeah, what's yeah, going on? And, and the Briscoes are not to be taken lightly, especially you see what they do to each other. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to work out good for their opponents. Not at all. And and uh, speaking of not working out good for their opponents, we have Shane Taylor Promotions up against <laughs> Jack Draper, Dalton Castle, and Eli Isom. This is a this is a. Uh, uh, a, a, a plethora of teams that are strange partners yeah. because we have Dalton Castle who volunteered Eli Isom and Dak Draper to potentially die up against Shane Taylor promotions. And Shane Taylor promotions was just like, well, I mean, if you want to die, we'll kill you. Like we don't have a problem with this. So this is for our ring of honor, six man tag team championships. The crazy part of this is I could actually see Dalton Castle's team winning just because of the storyline of none of these guys get along because nobody knows why they're a team and Dalton Castle is some kind of weird puppet strings. That's the only reason why I could potentially see this title changing. Otherwise, I'm just expecting Shane Taylor promotions to curb stomp these people. (laughs) So who do you who do you have? I'm going to go with Shane Taylor promotions just because I would like for them to retain. I'm not opposed to Dalton Castle, uh, Dak Draper, and Eli Isom uh, getting the six-man tag titles simply because of that storyline. It's just like, oh, we, I don't like him. I don't like him. You know, we don't like each other. Nobody likes each other. But now you have to be a team, you know, if if they go on to win. So that's and that's always great. That'd be great for character development, great for storyline. So if they were to win, I wouldn't be upset. But I would I think it's a little better if (laughs) St. Taylor Promotions actually, you know, has more than just one successful title defense. I just I just want to see a moment where uh, where Dalton Castle tries to kick one of Shane Taylor promotions in the balls. One of the three of them, just to see like what happens. Like, wanna... they, or if they just like stand there like, what the fuck? It's, it's just like, <laughs> oh, that's not how this is supposed to happen. <laughs> <laughs> but 
we also have a pure title match where here we will have Jonathan Gresham putting up his pure title. We spoke about this a little bit earlier up against Mike Bennett, the story of respect. Who do you respect? How do you earn respect? What does it mean to have respect? As much as, as much as I like Mike Bennett, I'm still, I'm still giving this to the octopus. There is, I don't think anybody can touch this man right now. He is on a crazy win streak. And I don't think if he loses, it's going to be up against uh, Mike Bennett. So uh, no, no, no slight to Bennett, but take Gresham on this one. What about you? Yeah. Uh, gotta go with Gresham. <laughs> gotta go. With <laughs> Again, no offense to Mike Bennett. You know, I'm just really looking forward. That's what I'm, I'm looking forward to see how he fares. And not only just in the, in a pure rules match, but in the pure rules match against the pure rules wrestler, like the champion, like the best, of the best in, you know, the, in the division, you know, arguably in Ring of Honor, you know, and um, after this victory that we're pretty much predicting, you know, um, I want to see what they do with, uh, with Gresham going forward, you know, he'll be at 11 and 0, like, do, does that uh, lead for him to possibly, you know, jump into the world title picture, you know, like, can he throw his weight around saying, look, I am the top title contender and or a top champion in ring of honor right now you know and maybe a page out of the the nwa book i know after what is it seven wins seven tv title uh defenses that they can go on and challenge for the world title maybe he says like look i have 11 wins right now you know nobody's beating me let me i want to purify every division you know uh, Lethal's tried in in the the heavyweight title or the world title the picture and you know didn't work out that way. Uh, maybe Gresham could try his shot, and he has a viable way to do so, being on an eleven and zero streak be, and being a champion. You know, but that's just me. You know, just armchair booking. See if they go about that way. But the only thing that I'm actually expecting to happen is a uh, Gresham retain. So yeah. Yeah, that match, I think uh, I think that one may have the potential of being a match of the night candidate. Yeah. But another match that I think will also be a potential match of the night candidate, and it's strange to say that considering one of the persons involved, is Tony Deppin defending the TV title against Dragon Lee. This one, they had a classic match okay. against each other earlier in the year. And this is, I think this one's going to be really good. I think that... Violence Unlimited is slowly helping Deppin to unlock that part of himself, that that kind of uh, animalistic side of him. It's slowly coming out here and there. Uh, he had a pretty good promo video on Week by Week, and uh, I, I I liked it. And I think that this these guys are going to have a good match. I this one's kind of tough to pick. Yeah, this one this one is tougher yeah. to pick. This one's tough because I can easily see it going both ways, especially right. because of the level of intelligence that LFI used to be able to get the match. That, I thought, was really well done. So I kind of want to give it to Dragon Lee, but at the same time, that would leave Violence Unlimited with zero championships in the uh, faction war that's kind of going on. So I'm going to go with Tony Deppin retaining this one. I think that it's a nice signature win for Deppin and kind of solidifies him as TV champion. You know, as much as I want to go with Dragon Lee, I'm going to concur on that 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 idea. I think that Deppin, um, at this point now, before he just was able to hang with uh, Dragon Lee, I think he's definitely gotten better over the past couple months, and I think that he's at a point where, as far as you know, in ring, he's great. Character, we're still working on it, so. <laughs> But I think that, you know, he can retain and and that'll be great for him. You know, Violence Unlimited, they don't want to give up anything. They definitely want to give up the television title. Not at this point. It's it's too much at stake right now. The faction wars at not even at their peaks. They're just well, possibly at their peaks right now. It's like everybody's on edge. You know, they don't definitely don't want to be the 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 team that loses anything at this point. But uh I think and even if so, they know how to fight fire with fire. So if uh, LFI comes out to help, 
Dragon Lee, you know that the rest of Avila Unlimited will be out there to help Tony Deppin. And I think that's going to be where the, the X factor comes in is the fact that he now has backup before Tony Deppin, when he, you know, when he lost to Dragon Lee, he didn't have the backup then. Now he has people to watch his back just like Dragon Lee does. So I think that is going to play a factor. And uh, I think, and I think he, he, he needs it. He needs to retain, you know, he needs to retain this title. But speaking of the uh, the faction wars that are going on, we also have the leader of Violence Unlimited, Brody King, taking on, let's say, uh, 1A or 1B of the foundation yeah. in Jay Lethal, the franchise, the, 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 the face that runs the place when it comes to Ring of Honor, Jay Lethal. And this one is going to be – this one – is another potential match. Yeah. <laughs> they're there. They've been slowly stacking the deck when it comes to who can be match of the night. Uh, so many different options with this pay-per-view. This is another one. Jay lethal versus Brody King, the kind of leaders, as we're saying of their respective factions going at it. I'm going with Brody King on this one. I think he needs the win more than Jay Lethal. Jay Lethal has kind of been in a slump recently, yeah. but he's also the kind of person that can bounce back so quickly from it by just, you know, taking a microphone and going, but I'm Jay Lethal. And everybody's yeah. like, hey, he's got a point. He's got a point. He's Jay Lethal. Whereas Brody King, to help keep that violence unlimited fire alive, he needs this win the same way that Deppin needs the win to solidify his role as TV champion. I'm going with Brody King on this one. I'm actually going to go with Jay Lethal on this. It's like, I, I agree that Brody King could use the win, you know, and, and solidify himself as, you know, he's already the pretty much the face of Violence Unlimited. Um, he's definitely a big, big deal. But just like you said, Lethal's been in a slump lately and whereas if he did lose he couldn't take the loss and bounce back but i think this is just he just needs a win badly like he's been pretty much i don't i don't and i don't even want to say disappointing but he's been on pretty much on a slump for the most part you know outside of he really hasn't been doing anything in the singles matches lately you know he hasn't been he hasn't been racking them up he hasn't been racking up those wins so i think that this might be something to get him back on track. Um, I don't even care who wins the match. I, I just know it's going to be a great match. Yeah. That's, therefore, that's really – I'm just looking I'm, forward to the match itself, honestly. I'm, I'm in the same boat as you when it comes to this one. I'm, I, this was the first match that was announced for Best of the World. Yeah. And it's actually the one I've most been looking forward to since the pay-per-view. Like, anything about the pay-per-view has been announced. It still is always this match – of Jay Lethal versus Brody King. I think that it is a uh, impromptu or, or um, unannounced kind of number one contenders match in its own way when it comes to the world title. But we will be talking about the world title in a moment. But before that, we got to talk about a storyline that has kind of flown under the radar and has been not talked about or not had a lot of a build, but you still kind of want to see what happens. And this is EC3 taking on Flip Gordon. Now, this is a storyline that dates back some months now where EC3 was tagging with Flip Gordon against the Briscoes. Flip Gordon cost the Briscoes the match through some chicanery. Then Flip Gordon was saying, you know, I still have this, uh, this world title shot in my back pocket from four years ago or whenever the hell he won it. And uh, he's saying, you know, Roosh, I'm calling you out, even though he clearly doesn't watch his own product because a week prior Roosh was suspended. So Roosh could not have answered this uh, challenge in any way, shape or form. But EC3 comes out and says, you are showing that you are without honor. And uh, that's not going to fly. That's not going to work for me. So we need to settle this because I saw what you did. Like, I understand what happened now. And. That that kind of thing. I, I can't I will not be associated with that. So it's Mr. Control Your Narrative versus Mr. My narrative is whatever people are willing to pay me for. Exactly. Like I, I, it'll it'll change on a dime. So this one, literally. Yeah, this one that yeah, quite literally will change on a dime. Yeah. So this one will this one will be pretty good, but I think that EC3 pulls out the win here. And it's kind of unfortunate because in a way it's all a uh, self-fulfilling prophecy. 
Flip Gordon, if you if we remember what Flip Gordon was three years ago at All In, this red hot face that was having the crowds behind him, that he gets into that feud with Bully Ray, then he just kind of goes up and down, up and down, but can't get the job done. He ends up with with Villain Enterprises, still can't get the job done. Villain Enterprises goes the way of you know of the dodo because of everything that happened with Marty Skrull and Flip Gordon turns heel in essence, because he's saying, well, nobody like doing things the right way never seems to work. I might as well just get paid and do whatever the hell I want to do. So that's not working for him either. And it's crazy because every loss that he takes kind of proves him right as to why he turned heel in the first place. And this match is not going to be a exception to the piling on. I think EC3 pulls out the win. Who do you got? I got EC3. I think he needs it just as far as pay-per-views go. You know, he lost his match against Jay Briscoe. Uh, and, and which he had a great showing in, you know, uh, but I think he definitely needs it. He could use it, especially getting his revenge on, you know, he's, he's also again for the narrative of having honor. This man has no honor. Clearly, you know, he doesn't care about anything or anybody except for money. And, you know, that's not right in Ozzy EC3. So I think that he should be able to get the job done and, uh, give, uh, fuck. What is his name? That's Flip. Flip Gordon. Yeah, Flip <laughs> Gordon. I was going to just call him the mercenary. Again, give uh, Flip Gordon his comeuppance. Speaking of comeuppance, whoo! Josh Wood, Silas Young. Last man standing. Speaking of comeuppance, each man owns a win over the other. And as it so happens, the win is in each other's specialty. Yeah. So... We got to figure out who is the real dominant man out of two guys, one tag. This is a last man standing match. Hope Josh is praying that if he can put Silas Woods down, this is the end of it because he's tired of getting attacked from behind. <laughs> but Silas is still the guy who is saying, I've taught you everything you know, but on everything that I know, and you really should have paid more attention. Because how did you let me sucker you into a last man standing match? You know, the the, the joke, uh, what was it? Um, every day we stray further and further from God's light. Every day, Josh Woods is straying further and further away from pure rules, which is where he's yeah. supposed to be. Exactly. And then, now he is in a match that absolutely works in Silas's Young's wheelhouse. How do you beat the guy? How do you How do you win the match? You beat your opponent to the point where they can't stand. Oh, so if they if they but if they grab a rope, no, rope breaks yeah. don't help you. They're closed fist, absolutely legal. You can do whatever you want. And that's exactly what Silas Young is looking for. However, I think this is the turning point for Josh Woods. I think this is the match that he wins and he wins this feud. I'm giving this one to Josh Woods. How about you? Yeah, I'm giving it to Josh Woods. Again, I think he needs it. Uh at this point, you know, he lost in the the pure <laughs> The irony of that, him losing the pure match, the pure rules match. But I think, yeah, he just needs it. Um, and I can see uh, Silas giving him a rub, putting him over, make him that beast that he already looks now. You know, he shaved his head. He looks even more dangerous now. So that's going to I think that's going to be a, 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 a nice little addition to the match itself. Just going to be real physical, real brutal. But I got Josh coming out on top. Yeah, yeah, I think that Josh Woods is going to be able to pull out the win because he is a uh, a true underdog. But that leaves us with one match left to talk about. And if we're going to talk about underdogs, we got to talk about the former leader of Mexico Squad. Now, guys, I don't know if you remember, it was only a week ago. We're talking about all of these matches and what could potentially be match of the night. But Ness called it last week. Ness said that this one is going to be match of the night. When Bandito tries, tries his hardest to pry that Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Championship from Roosh's cold, cold, wrapped in wire grip. 
Bandito is going to try to do what no man has been able to do in, like, I think a year. Like, well over a Probably, year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he is going to try to take this Ring of Honor World Championship from Roosh. And uh, this is an interesting match because it when you have somebody who wins a tournament, you don't necessarily need too much of a storyline to have kind of like, you kind of have that built-in thing, like, hey, he won a tournament. Let's, uh, you know, like, it, it works. Yeah. And uh, there is a, a, a kind of um, a tradition here with this, you know, Rudo and Technico really going at it with this Lucha aspect, this Lucha history between them that they have. And Roosh has been on another level when it comes to being a horrible heel, <laughs> like just an asshole of a heel. And yeah, just l- we're looking at it, 494 days as Ring of Honor champion. Will he make it the six that he needs to get to 500? I don't know, but I think there's a very good chance that he does because as much as I like Bandito and as much as I think Bandito had earned that win in the survival of the fittest, I don't think he's the guy to take this title from Roosh. However, I could see them doing it because of the fact that it's live crowds for the first time in so long. And the massive pop that would happen if Bandito won this match, it could potentially blow the roof off the place in Baltimore. But I'm still going with Roosh on this one. Ness, what do you think? I'm it's torn. tough. It's tough. <laughs> <laughs> it is tough because I, I'm a huge fan of both of these guys. Honestly, I have to agree. I'm going to uh, go with Roosh retaining just for the simple fact that it's so much stuff going on far as, you know, Violence Unlimited, the Foundation, LFI. I think that's a bigger story um, than, you know, and I love Bandito. I'm a huge fan. I would love for him to become Ring of Honor World Champion. I don't think that this is the time that it's going to happen, unfortunately. He's like, again, he getting his shot. He got the opportunity. That's great. But it's just too many underlying things that are going on elsewhere with the other faction and, you know, the faction where they are having right now in Ring of Honor to just up and take the title off of the world title off of uh, Rouge at the moment. Now, if it happens, I'm all for it, you know. I I'm not gonna be upset whatsoever, but at this moment in time, I don't see it happening, unfortunately. Yeah, this is uh, part. I think part of the reason why is you know, like I'm saying, with a uh, with a with a tournament win, you don't necessarily need that too much of a storyline, yeah. but there really isn't a storyline in this like we basically found out last week that bandito is going to be the one challenging and it's a, a, a week-long build where roosh is just like no you're not going to win like that's yeah. basically, that's basically the gist of this of, of this feud and i think that it's it, it has a it has a ways to go it does have a ways to go and uh we'll, we'll see exactly what exactly is going to, to to shake out when it comes to this one but guys let us know all of your thoughts in the comments let us know if you agree with our predictions let us know if you disagree with our predictions we can say one thing's for sure that you know and maybe maybe this changes uh maybe this changes some of the predictions but we can tell you that ring of honor has announced august 20th and august 21st they will be in the 2300 arena in philadelphia for Glory by Honor 18, and this is a interesting situation because whoever wins between Roosh or Bandito will be defending against Flip Gordon. So do, the question now is, does that change the Flip Gordon EC3 match? Because do you want to have, do you want to be advertising for Glory by Honor and talk about how Flip Gordon's going to have that title match there, and EC3 pins him? Or do you kind of want to cement Flip Gordon as a good heel and have him win? And then on the flip side, no pun intended, if you're going to have a solidified heel, 
don't you need a solidified face as the champion? And when we add in that on night two of Glory by Honor, we have Dragon Lee and Roosh as a team up against Bandito and Ray Horace as a team, there could be a situation, just hear me out, where Bandito wins on Sunday, he beats Flip Gordon, and then, you know, kind of goes right back into this longer-term storyline between him and Roosh. So uh, there's a lot, you know, the plates the plates aren't just spinning now. They're, yeah. like, just flying in the air. <laughs> they're, they are, they are. It's doing, elevated. Yeah. They're, they're doing cartwheels. They're doing cartwheels and backflips and Spanish flies and, and shooting star presses. They're doing everything. So, uh, yeah, what does that does that change any of your thoughts on uh, on best in the world? Um, I'll keep my I'll keep my choices where they're at. But you definitely raised some good questions, and I'm gonna be looking out and paying very very close attention to what goes on in Ring of Honor up until um, the Glory by Honor show. And I'm probably and I might even be there. You know, this is, again at the 2300 Arena, just you're, like you're gonna be you're gonna be the guy at night two screaming both these guys. <laughs> I definitely will. If I, if I don't make it to both shows, I was definitely gonna go to the Saturday one. But yeah, I'm definitely gonna be in there. Both these, all these guys, you know, even I'll even give Bray Horace a, a, a shout out too, at, at while I'm cheering for you know LFI and, and Bandito. But yeah, I'm I'm um, I'm definitely looking forward to that. Yeah, so that'll be that'll be definitely interesting to see, guys. But until then, we will uh, we will we'll be figuring out. I don't know how exactly we're going to be doing our our reviews of, uh, of of Battle Riot and Best in the World. Ness is probably going to be, uh, you know, his, his throat's going to be a little, 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 little scratchy after yeah. after he's there at the uh, at the 2300 Arena for Battle Riot. So we'll see how all of that goes. But Ness, one place where people uh, can always find you, if they even if they can't hear you because you have you've yelled yourself hoarse, is social media. So tell the people where they can find you, sir. You guys can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at skinny underscore underscore Kravitz. Catch me right here on the True Hill Heat YouTube channel, one half of Fusion of Honor with my man, the Stat King, the man of a thousand and four numbers, where we review MLW Fusion and Ring of Honor. Catch me on Blunt Impact and Joints of Jabronis with Chris G, where we review Impact Wrestling. Catch me on NX3 with, once again, Chris G and Romeo Anthony Cologne, where we review NXT. I'm the Roundtable Rebel. Catch me on the Roundtables. Uh, look out for me. I will be on the True Hill Heat uh, IG. I'll go live. A couple times tomorrow so you guys can see what's going on you know try to interact with some of the fans you know because this, this is my first show uh live since you know covid started i i can't wait to get back um i'm sure the people that are going to be in attendance i know they're going to be excited ready to go back you know i just want to share that experience with you guys uh and as always you can hear my illustrious voice on true toxicity and guys, you can catch me on Dark Power covering AEW Dark, AEW Elevation, and NWA Power, and always in our Facebook groups, getting into fun conversations with you guys. So for myself, for Ness, the three-time, three-time, three-time baby-making champ, we want to say thank you for watching. Remember to hit that like button, comment, share, subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, guys, take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Peace.